Hello, I am Achoom, the cat of many hats. And last time on D&D Minus, our heroes battled Mamoon and their slime counterparts. I banished my counterpart to another plane of existence. Slime Gravy and Slime Vardas got shrunk down to the tiniest of little guys. And Slime Damien, or Slamian, and actual Damien had a whisper fight. Also, I guess Damien has a portal gun? Because he stuck Mamoon in a portal loop. And we eventually just kind of walked straight down to the next level of uh, Purgatory D's. Awesome when you did the portal thing. He just like sunk away. That was so cool. Has anybody played Portal 2? Oh, yeah. Do you think? Anyway, I'm not done with my thing. <laughs> How is it that we've gotten this far into the season without Achum having a thing one and thing two side? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> They're both frogs. <laughs> <laughs> the cat and the many hats. Nice. The next level of Purgatoni D's house of just okay stuff. It's time to get geared up for another level of hell. So the cat in the many hats. I heard it. Yeah, <laughs> I heard it. Was it was great. I mean, you know, that's what Noah was inferring. That's why. <laughs> yes. I'm Susian. Out of socket. I <laughs> Can we get two levels every level up? No, you can have one level every <laughs> level. We should get to level can 20. Can I have no. an extra cookie tonight? Because I've been very good. <laughs> very good. It just, it feels anticlimactic if we don't get to 20 by you the end of the You threw... A, a scorpion man th- into a time dimension and it killed him. <laughs> it was plenty epic. Dad. Can- <laughs> Dad. Dad. Oh, we're magic. Now. Do a fucking card trick or something. <laughs> to be fair, we've never been level eight before. Oh, were we only level seven last we year? We were level yeah. seven last wow. year. Yeah, think about how much further you're getting. It feels like he can just scale the HP of the enemies to our level, so it'd be okay if we were level exactly. 20. You right? absolutely, you can, nothing can scale to a level 20 character. They're like, I bring <laughs> down the heavens and punch God in the throat. We had level 20 <laughs> battles last year. This, you know what? This is a Yeah, I was one I'm art. wasting our one time. Art. I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so we're level eight. Were we supposed to do extra spells? You I didn't so do that. Were, I looked at the thing. So yeah. absolutely. I looked at the thing you work. sent and I have a very <laughs> strong opinion about what to get from Tony D, but I have not like replaced my new spells in yet. Well, I have done the homework, haven't yeah, yeah. I? I have. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Noah did the homework Nine before class Nine minutes began. before the record. <laughs> Nine minutes before I've been like, oh fuck, what were we supposed to do? What does that mean? Oh shit. Oh good. There's only 633 <laughs> options I have to choose between here. Good. All right. But you could just take a plus two instead of combing through the feats. That's you true. Just, you could. Yeah. yeah. No, I found a good feat, though. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, happy. no, the feats are awesome. But Heath, if you want to just bump your strength up, too, you could just do that, too. Oh, I could take a plus two on one of my attributes instead. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I could have 20 strength. Yeah, you could have 20. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right. As the blackness forms once again into Tony T's shop, you notice that it looks significantly more shabby than the last time you came here. The shelves look dilapidated and broken down, and there's way less stuff around. A very disappointed Purgatoni D looks around with his arms crossed and says, Do you see what you did? Do you see what you guys did? Look, 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 look. listen to me. No. Th- you guys. <laughs> what do we do? You are in the afterlife. Everybody else who comes here comes here once based on how they just behaved. And from the looks of my place right now, you fed, uh, let me guess, three, maybe four people to a monster in the pit of despair for no reason? And then you lied and tricked your way into three keys of hell? And then as he's saying this, a gelatinous achoom 
the cat walks into the room with a cup of coffee and says, <laughs> and they attacked me for no reason. Yeah, and you attacked him for no reason. I feel like lie is like really uh, more than uh, the, the behavior merits in terms of an accusation. I, I don't think we lied. I think we do. do we, we were sli- somewhat deceptive, but uh, we definitely killed more than four people in the pit of despair. Well, I don't think so. we really need to draw attention to that. Hey, <laughs> hey Damien. Hold the fucking <laughs> fart bucket. Is there not an entire fucking war? happening? Confessing extra murder, first thing on the whiteboard. Which war? <laughs> There's a whole war happening. Yeah, you, you're saying people aren't war? dying? <laughs> Do you guys mean on the first level of hell? Yes. Uh, we're not concerned with the first level of hell. Also, you didn't have anything to do with that. Oh, well, I mean, we had something to do with it. We were there. Look, right, for what I'm telling you is when you guys show up here, the stuff that's available for you is going to change based on how you behaved. And with the murdering and the lying, and the banishing of people to dimensions where they don't necessarily belong when they have no magic to get them back. Well, it was self-defense. Well, I, you know, when she banished him, he had plenty of spell slots, okay? I'm just, <laughs> I just want to be clear about this. Also, we do all that stuff in hell, so it's like positive. Yeah. No, it's not. That, it's just, that's a common mistake people make. They're like, oh, I go to hell, so it's opposite. No, we're not right. Cenobite it, it's rules here. Opposite. No, we're not Cenobite rules. Now, listen to me. This is me. I work here. We're not Cenobite rules here. Bad is not good and good is not bad. I turned away and looked at something else. Okay, well, there you have it. And as as you turn away and don't pay attention to Purgatoni D, one of the shelves just falls over and all the stuff on it shatters. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah, stop misbehaving. The, the worse you are, the worse the stuff is. Did that happen? Because I turned around? Yeah. Oh, no. Are you saying he's a bad dog? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, are you saying that? Look, if you guys don't want good stuff, you don't have to have good stuff. Anyways, it is what it is. Help yourselves. <laughs> okay, honestly, when you described the bare shelves and everything, I thought Tony D was going to come out and be like, fucking COVID pandemic, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is the worst. Just right-wing ranting for the entire yeah. really big PPP loan. It was bullshit, but it still didn't cover me. I went on Jimmy Kimmel. <laughs> <laughs> he made me be in a claw, you go machine. In claw machine. He made yeah. me go in a claw yeah, machine. Did. Uh. Tony D is a far leftist. How dare you? All right. So for this level up, you have been given a chance to choose from Tony D's house of pretty lousy stuff. These items contributed by our patrons and a few by myself are good, but they all have a catch. So Mm -hmm. who wants to grab something first? I know what I want, but I will let people go first if they would like. Why don't you go ahead and go if you already know? Yeah, yeah, All right, if people are still thinking, I am psyched about the bag of later cheese. Yeah. (laughs) By Dominic, a.k.a. Keithleton. I had a feeling. So this is a magic bag of many cheeses. Many. Just reach your hand in once per 10 minutes and a new cheese will come out. Roll a 12 plus Arcana check to know what that cheese will do. Otherwise, Eli fills me in once I eat it. So, (laughs) pretty excited. There is a table of 100 different consequences. Some are good, some are bad. I'll read the rest. When you decide to indulge in one of these cheeses, you'll experience its effects ranging from beneficial to, let's say, unpredictable. If gifting (laughs) or throwing to an opponent, this is my favorite part, so I can give one to to y'all, or I can throw one to an opponent, and they have to roll a wisdom saving throw of 12 plus to not be compelled to eat it. Oh my God. So if I do well with the Arcana check and I know it's a bad, I can throw it to the opponent and they have to roll to not have to eat it. And something bad might happen. Who doesn't love cheese? Yeah. It continues. One other thing. Each cheese. Here's the catch. Each cheese must be consumed. I'm pretty good with that, but there is more to the sentence. If you don't convince someone else to eat it, your character will be compelled to eat it, but maybe you'll want to. Mm, and I think I, I will. And I looked at <laughs> I looked at the spreadsheet of 100. So I guess I'm rolling a D100 for... You will roll a D100, yes. consequences, or Eli will do that. Mm-hmm. And there's some fun ones. Most importantly, I could turn into a falcon. Okay, that's, that was the real <laughs> That's right, yes, that's obviously, turning that, that into a falcon a, is one of the options. <laughs> Honestly, we should have made like 50 of these turning into a yeah, falcon. Really, just honestly, it's an odd number you turn into a falcon. How well it goes in our shows, yeah. Very good. 
very good. Okay, can I get that? Yeah, absolutely. It's Tony, yours. Can I get that? Yeah, yep. I'd like to take out cheese right now. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, you want to take out a cheese so that we sure can uh, ev- the folks at home can see how it is? All right, give me an Arcana check. Okay. Boom. 13, just barely got it. 13. All right. That means I roll. And tell me what it is. Yeah. Uh, what it is. Yeah. So this is. That's 18, which means. Havarti of haste. Yes. <laughs> doubles your movement speed for 10 minutes. I start doing zoomies so fast. Oh, yeah. You're just. <laughs> and, and all the shelves are sort of crashing around you. Gelatinous achoom is like, stop it, you're making me nauseous. You're making me nauseous. I keep jumping on him. I keep jumping on him. No. On him. I believe stop the it. name is Slatchoom. Slatchoom, that's Slatchum. right. I'm licking you. Oh my God. I'm going to have a long rest. I'm going to bamf into whatever. I run over to Tony D real fast. Lick him. Hey, stop it. Back to you. Stop it. He likes it. He's a dog guy. He jangles a can of pennies at you. <laughs> what is that? What is that? <laughs> All right. Who's next? I have questions. Sure. I also have questions. I would like to inquire about the frog horn leg horn. Yeah, absolutely. Because there are not enough parameters. This one seems to be Eli created. Mm-hmm. If I'm not mistaken. So frog horn leg horn. Do damage equal to the number of frogs on the battle map. This is amazing. But take as much damage as Eli can delete while you're counting. You may not begin counting beforehand. Where is the start? So you'll be like, I want to use my frog horn leg horn to damage the monster. Starts now. Mm-hmm. Starts now. Then I, you have to count all the frogs on the battle map to see how much damage you do. Here's the problem, though, my love. Yeah. Uh, sorry, out of character. Here's the problem, though, God. First of all, a choom doesn't address God. <laughs> I would prefer that a choom dress address me as my love. <laughs> here's the here's the problem. Snoopy although Boop. although fucking a choom and a little pope hat. I mean that that's worth it, right? Yes, I, I love that. You, 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 Covering you, up you, child you, rapes. You, 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 <laughs> <laughs> Are any of us as characters in hell, but still atheists? And we're like, I still think this is just like some kind of trick or pareidolia or whatever. I'm a cat. Of course I am. It's a good question. I think that everyone in the D&D universe, because the gods are things you can like talk to and interact with, are what we would consider atheists, right? Like Marvel Universe, right? Like they're aware that Thor exists, but he's just an alien. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I feel like you're probably in Marvel Universe realm of atheism. Okay, so like these are real things, but they're not like a magical Christian god or anything. Right. They're not not anything that we would consider to be a god. There's just a lot of magic in the world. Okay. So here's the thing. I count them as I create them. You got to count them out loud. It's an audio medium, my friend. Oh, sounds like one of the... Yeah, exactly. Love it. No, I, I'm, I'm not going to go with that one, but I love the idea. Thank you. Well done, Tony D. I was about to you say, this so is a good. hell of a thing. I'm going to cut this from the bottom. <laughs> hey, I just wanted to point out your idea sucks. I was like, cool. Thanks, <laughs> darling. Thanks, Achoom the cat. Nope. What if you fucked yourself? <laughs> Achoom slips on some slime and hurts his back. <laughs> Achoom's in a carrier inside some water somehow. Thank you, yeah. <laughs> There is, but it's like, it, it, it gives her incentive oh, to put 1,300 noise. frogs on the map. Yeah, and yeah also true. there's all under fog of, of war. There's like a whole bunch of things. Yeah, there's, I mean, yeah. to be fair, it, it can't possibly incentivize her to put more frogs on the map <laughs> than she already does. I mean, I mean, give me some credit, Noah. No, I already, you're right, you're right. Yeah. But also, like, you counting 177 frogs on the podcast probably wouldn't be thrilling audio anyway. That's so. true. What if you did, like, the number of frogs divided by like a roll of a d20 or something. No, because then it's just incentivizing I would the frogs. Like, Go ahead. Well, she's going to add frogs whether or not this thing exists. So I would like to continue. Well, first of all, I will absolutely continue filling every battle map with frogs because they're yeah. great. Mm-hmm. Second of all, I would like to take the toy mouse. Yes, of the that's what I hope you're saying. Yes, yeah. So I also might take that because I, I might have a thing that well, negates Well, it's too the, late. You didn't go. No, but I'm saying I might have a thing that negates the curse. So I can essentially use it without a downside. Well, I love curses. Tony, do you have an extra one of those in the back? I don't. I only got the one. Are you lying? I feel like you have one in Maybe the back. Maybe if you had killed less people. <laughs> Damien? Yeah. Uh, Finders Keepers? Uh, uh, Toy Mouse. (laughs) 
fucking dibs in your face, you piece of fucking shit. Dibs. In the live action remake of this, Achoom <laughs> just ball checked Damien. <laughs> oh, you want the toy masters? Well, ball check. There you go. <laughs> oh, he's like he's reaching for it and she knocks it off the shelf. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I would like the toy mouse. I am a cat, so obviously that makes sense. The toy mouse of the hellhound, please. This is a toy by, mouse. By, by, you uncrediting by communist. Michael Rops. Yep. Patron. Patron, Michael Rops. Thank you, Michael Rops. Nice last name. Rops, Rops, Rops. Okay. Uh, this Don't is worry, Michael. A toy I'm going to cut that part where she just fucking dunks <laughs> on your name super hard. <laughs> No, it's fun to but say. But I'm not going to cut this, which is weird, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is a toy mouse. As an action, it can be thrown at an enemy, and if the command word is spoken, it will, which would be, I curse you, it will become a hellhound companion for the next five minutes. It has the stats and the capabilities of a normal hellhound. It will take its turn immediately after the user each round. The catch. The user polymorphs into a French bulldog. Yes. The user retains their the ears? stats and abilities. And hats. And hats. I know. And hats. But is stuck as a French bulldog for the next eight hours. Oh, we're going to play so hard. This, <laughs> <laughs> this effect can be removed with dispel magic being cast on the bulldog or any other spell that would remove a curse. If the user is a dog, like being, which I'm not, instead of a French bulldog, it's turned into a sphinx cat, which is dumb. It should have been, it should have been transformed into a British short hair, which has the little cheeky. Oh, the cheek, the fat cheek cat. Cheeky, well, you know, we cheeky, can, cheeky cat. we can make that happen. Yeah, 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 exactly. The pug cat. Ooh, can a chum share this with me and I turn into a oh, sphinx? Oh, sphinx cats no. are those hairless ones. Jesus, I clicked it. No. They look like me naked. It's my, it's my mouse, my mouse, my mouse. Anna, I'm going to give you the item I got in the last Purgatoni D. No. Which is the Dr. Plox's medicinal pellet boxes. Excuse me? Because I, it essentially gets rid of curse. I have dispel magic. Yes, but you can't use it as a French bulldog, I believe. Yes, I can. No, you, you can. She, she can still use all of her stuff. Yeah, this would be better. You will not waste a spell slot. You can just eat a Plox box every time you turn into it, and it'll immediately turn you back. How about you go ahead and give give me a Plox box if I need it? Well, because it takes an action. So if I just give you the item, you can use it whenever you want. I I, I will. I I think the comedy the comedy gold of me being a French bulldog is worth staying that. Yeah, way then for you eight just hours. give her one after the after the combat because she can still do all the same. Because like it's not like she was kicking ass as a cat. In combat. That's true. Oh, yeah. excuse well, me. Well, yeah, you could dispel shit to another plane of existence, but you could do that as a French bulldog, too. That's true, yeah. Indeed. Yeah. Are you two just like sliding pieces of paper across the table right now? <laughs> negotiating? <laughs> what was amazing about the negotiation is that Morgan, our editor, was like, hey, I'm going to give you this item that makes your item better. And Ed Shum was like, no deal. <laughs> yeah. Close the box. Hey, everybody, just jumping in once again to thank you so much for listening to the show. We are so grateful you listened to this thing, and we are so happy to make it for you. Hey, I know that this week it's a short episode, but if you are a patron over at patreon.com forward slash DND minus all spelled out, you would actually already be listening to our latest bonus episode. That's right, our third episode. Bonus episode is out and available for patrons right now. It is playing of the game Supernormal. Our players are superheroes in Divorce Court, and it is an incredibly good time. So if you ever needed motivation to chuck us a dollar, I know a lot of you are new patrons thanks to Matreon, but if you needed a reason to join now, head on over to patreon.com forward slash DD minus. You'll get instant access to that 40-minute bonus episode. Nice hunk and chunk of D&D minus to get you through your day. All right. Thanks so much for listening to the show. Let's get you back to it. I am going to take the milk carton of Gwyneth Paltrow's blood. Yes. Fuck yes. <laughs> this milk carton of Gwyneth Paltrow. I'm not forgetting to credit the uh, the patron, by the way. I think this I made is this one that one. Eli made yeah. up. Yeah.
This milk carton of Gwyneth Paltrow's blood restores you to full health, but due to the serious amounts of bullshit now in your system, you take double damage from the jade egg in your vagina. Also, <laughs> your junk smells like a candle. My question was, what's that damage? Well, I feel like it's double damage from anything that would that you would take damage from. Exactly, yeah. But so how long does my junk smell like a candle? The, so the negative effects of the milk carton of Gwyneth Paltrow's blood go away after a long rest. Okay. All right. So it's yeah. a long time. I, know. I, can, I can handle that. I don't, I'm, I'm chased. So, it, so it, yeah. Unlike <laughs> actual <laughs> products from goop, it goes away after a long rest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really, honestly, of all the Gwyneth Paltrow stuff, that's the least long lasting effect to your channels. <laughs> yeah. The laser kettle on your vagina does yeah, not right. go yes, away yes, after yes, a long rest. Right. 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 Yeah. Depends yep. on how you define a long rest. <laughs> If, if you mean like trip to the seaside to recover, then maybe. That's how they used to use it. You listen to some dolphin fucking with Aaron Rodgers, maybe. Oh, my God. That's a real thing he does. That is yeah. a real thing he does. And then he sits in a dark cave, which is a way we torture people. Yep. You know, it sure does. I learned a lot of weird shit from listening to your shows. We can't ever say a nice thing about someone on our show because they go crazy. He keeps saying crazy things. And then like two weeks ago, it was like, U.S. government did AIDS, and everybody's like, seriously, man? What are you doing? Stop. God. Shut the fuck up. Stop. The Jets organization has to have so many people, like, dedicated to just wrangling Telling him, him to shut the fuck up. Yeah, exactly. Just exactly. side-tackling him away They're from They're like, microphone. can't you just send dick pics to your masseuse <laughs> or something? Can you just thing. rip off welfare or something? <laughs> Athletes <laughs> as a whole have a, a series of really terrible like opinions, right? Like basketball has the flat earthers and football has its problems. Do you think that there is an internal mechanism at the NFL where they occasionally get together and do like a workshop on like, so your guy thinks mushrooms are poison? <laughs> <laughs> they must. I mean, it's got to be part they, of their not, training, should, right? It's, it's yeah. a missed opportunity. Like yeah. Taylor Swift is a psyop needs to be taught yeah. in schools exactly. and the NFL HR. Yes. I wish that were true. I wish that were true. That's so smart. I wish it was true. That paranoid delusion that our uncles have. <laughs> Is there more than one NBA flat earther, or is it just Kyrie? oh, there's a oh, there's bunch. Kyrie Irving's yeah, yeah, yeah. the Are big there one. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh man. Yeah, there's because a when they Kyrie's asked the, the other ones about it, they were like, "He's got some great points," Jeez. and they were like, "No." That's the good thing about hockey. It's actually big in in NFL too. It's it, it's they like, don't know the earth really? is there. Yeah. The good thing about hockey is they don't know what politics is at all. Yeah, they don't say shit. If they did talk about their opinions, it would not go great. Is my yeah? They're like, I'd rather just have estimate. my teeth back. And yeah, then, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> Can I get my teeth bath after a long rest? <laughs> <laughs> Not in hockey. No. No. I am going to take the plus three dagger of vampiric consumption Ooh. by the Lolly Luli Low. Ooh. When the user makes a hit on a target, they can absorb 3d4 plus two health. Whomever has the dagger equipped and attuned has a mysterious compulsion to lick the dagger. The player must make an intelligence <laughs> saving throw, DC 12 to prevent this from happening after every hit with the dagger. If the player fails, they must make an attack roll, and if it succeeds against their armor class, they must take 1d4 necrotic damage and pretend to be a vampire for two rounds. Oh my God, this is oh, so perfect for Damien. It's no change. <laughs> that's what I was going to say, is I don't really have to pretend, right? Yeah, you're I, good. Yeah, right, yeah. I just, it's just a necrotic it's damage. It's never been more fitting. <laughs> oh my God. Do tieflings take necrotic damage uh yes okay that i wouldn't i didn't know if you wanted to change it or yeah. not but okay now i also i have to point this one out because it's so fucking good i don't need it because i have a better sword but i want to point out the high kill you by yep. chief non-binary pineapple this is so, so good. good it's a plus one long sword holy or arcane dm's choice that will allow itself to be swung only if the wielder compliments their target in haiku form. <laughs> that is so fucking good. I already have a Excellent. better sword, so it would, like, it would make no sense for me to take it. But I wanted to take that so bad just so that we could give Chief Non-Binary Pineapple their due. Oh, I love that. And the worst part of that, by the way, is the thing that I created, which is the name, I Kill You. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chief Baron, it, it did not come up with that name. <laughs> Oh, there's actually a, we were one away from it. So I rolled the, or you rolled the Havarti of Haste for me, which was an mm -hmm. 18 roll. 
when I got the cheese. A 19 would have been causes the consumer to speak in rhyme for one hour. Yeah, that's the Borsan of Babel. Oh, wow. Indeed. It's, <laughs> I mean, you spelled it Borsalt. Okay, to be, fa- to be fair, one of our patrons per- spelled it Borsalt. Okay. It's maybe going for Borsan, the like, I think they're going thing? for percent okay. as the goat, Maybe. Soft goat cheese, which has a vegan version, by the way. Oh. Huh? Fun. Don't say huh. <laughs> <laughs> I reject that huh. <laughs> Don't take huh from me. <laughs> I will say one other one that I was hoping somebody might go for. I considered it, but it was, it was like too, co- like, it would have been craziness. It would have just been constant arguments if I was this trying was to deal with This was too crazy for you. It was too crazy for me. The moment's reprieve locket. Is oh, very this interesting. was so good. Oh, yeah. Christopher Arguin. So it was, it's so many like contingencies. It's, it says, within the confines of this ancient locket lies a brief escape from destiny's grip. A chance to sidestep fate, if only for a moment. Yet, the sands of time are relentless. And every moment borrowed must be repaid as destiny deferred awaits its due. So it's an ancient silver with intricate designs locket that seems to shift when viewed out of the corner of one's eye. It carries a deep mystical aura. Its surface is adorned with an etched hourglass. Its sands suspended mid-fall, symbolizing the fleeting nature of time and the possibility of seizing control over one's immediate fate. Okay, I press an X. Or it, we're, we're, <laughs> yeah, I'm cutting all that. <laughs> cutting all that. It's so good. And there's like all these different ways that like Okay, if the effect of it didn't make, if it doesn't make sense later, there's like a contingency for that. And there's a contingency for all these different other things. I was like, I don't know, this is going to be like an hour every time I try to <laughs> use this. <laughs> yeah, Christopher contributes amazing stuff as a Dungeon Master level patron. But unfortunately, the moment's reprieve locket will have to wait for another time. Uh, oh, it's a, a single it's on time. time. Words. <laughs> like the spice? Do we, do, we, do, we also, do we also get to choose our, our feats or um? Oh, stat yeah. Boosts? If anyone knows their feats slash stat boosts, t- tell me. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to hear them. So, I'm sorry. I'm a cat in a sunbeam. I'm going to yawn. I got bored with being an abjuration. So I went back and uh, I've made myself a vampire cat. What? What? I've I've made myself. Um, <laughs> hey, hey, Anna. Sidebar. Yeah. Hey, We're sidebar. Story. Real, real quick. What the fuck are you doing, man? What's going on tonight? <laughs> no, I'm in the school of badass cantrips now. No. Nope. <laughs> I don't remember the name of it. <laughs> it's right there on your character sheet. Where is it? Okay. It's the school of bard knocks. <laughs> You're a evocation wizard now. Evocation. Which is basically badass cantrips, let's be honest. So yeah, now I now I have a bunch of badass cantrips, and because speak with animals wasn't doing shit for me, I now have mage armor, which I can do as a buff anytime I want to. All right. I had to speak with animals last time, and it never I never had a chance to. Yeah, it never comes up. Well, I tried to use it in the beginning yeah. by talking to the rodents that live by. To be like, you what's, talked what's to the Bartholomew. Tea? You made an and enemy. And fucking Bartholomew the mouse came and wasn't helpful at all. That was a failure. Pretty helpful to him. Not a success. Slapped you in the face. So, Eli, I have a question. Under my ability score improvements, it says I get two choices. Is that correct? Yes. So you can either improve like strength and dexterity by one each or dexterity by two. Okay, but I could also just choose a feat instead. Yes, correct. So a choom, but uh, what ability score or feat did you choose, a choom? Oh, I, I chose, I made my intelligence really good. Ooh. Ooh, a more intelligent achievement. I, I buffed my intelligence up to 19. What about you, Damien? I took the lucky feat. Ooh. Oh, I was going to do that. Shit. Oh. Yeah. It's a good one. Yeah, it's a really uh, good one. You get three like lucky rolls, I think, per long rest. Yes, you do. And we will, uh, we will hear about the effect of that when you use it for the first time. That's very mm-hmm. exciting. Vardos? I'm taking Shield Master. Ooh, I thought you would enjoy that one. <laughs> So you use your shield not just for protection, but also for offense. You gain the following benefits while you are wielding a shield, which I pretty much always am. If you take the attack action on your turn, you can use a bonus action to try to shove a creature within five feet of you with your shield. If you aren't incapacitated, you can add your shield's AC bonus to any dexterity saving throw 
that you make against a spell or other harmful effect that targets only you. And also, and this is very cool, if you are subjected to an effect that allows you to make a dexterity saving throw to take only half damage, you can use your reaction to take no damage if you succeed on the saving throw, interposing your shield between yourself and the source of the effect. Oh, wow. Right? Very, very cool. All right, Gravy, you know what you're doing yet, or are we going to find out at a later date? I'm feeling great about the lucky thing, and so I might do the same thing that Damien's doing. Or I was looking at Aberrant Dragon Mark, Ooh. which is pretty excited. So I would, I would have a manifested Aberrant Dragon Mark, and I determine its appearance and the flaw associated with it. I gain the following benefits. I increase my constitution by one, maximum of 20. I learn a cantrip of my choice from the sorcerer spell list. In addition, choose a first level spell from the sorcerer spell list. You learn that spell and can cast it through your mark. So I get a cantrip and a spell, right? Ooh, all right. Here, I've, got, I've got flavor text on that if you want to do it. Yeah, please. So gravy, like everyone's milling through their stuff and Tony D calls you to the side, right? And he's like, uh, hey, uh, gravy, gra- yeah, 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 Tony, what's up? Uh, how's things going with the sword? You know, it's, is it still trying to kill you? It, it it seems pretty fucking angry at me all the time. It, like, yells at me and stuff. It doesn't seem... Have you tried, seem... <laughs> like, talking to it? I, I've tried peace. a lot of stuff. It doesn't yeah. work. I, well, I think some of that anger might be rubbing off uh, because of that. And then he points, and just below your collar, you see a dark red mark in the shape of an eye. But not just any eye. It is the eye on the hilt of the sword. Whatever you did to get that sword, I think, I think its magic is starting to rub off on you, and uh, it might not all be good. I didn't really do it. I picked it from a list on a website. I'm going to need you to stay in fiction, Gravy. I just need you to stay in fiction. There's websites here. There's, you don't think there's the internet in hell? There's no, no, there's not the internet now. <laughs> That's what makes it hell. I mean, there's honestly. only the internet now. Puppet shows. <laughs> all right, so you're thinking, you're thinking I should, like, get rid of the sword? I mean, yeah, if you can. Just, so what, I just drop it? Do you want it? No, I don't want it. Are you kidding? It's, it's Tyrulai. You could sell it. No, I'm, like, I'm not selling Tyrulai. Are you kidding? That's a huge, that's, you, do you know what that sword is? I have no idea. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll, we'll talk next time you're here. We'll talk next right. time you're here. In right. the interest of plot, we'll talk next time. Should we you're walk here. back next to everybody else? Yeah, let's walk back next to everyone right. else. <laughs> that was oh, yeah, yeah, don't was, worry about it. Like, we were just talking about you don't think we did that thing where people go for a sidebar and everyone can tell they're going for a sidebar and then you guys really awkward. You guys weren't right? upset, right? No, I could tell you guys were doing a sidebar. Fuck. Sorry, I'm a very honest. I guy. could I just, also tell. I'm slow. We, we were having we were having a really fun you time up. here, you, and we were talking about you. But you know what? We're not going to talk about you anymore. That you did. Like your face again. My clothes weren't made out of slime. It would scratch you. <laughs> what? Why are you so upset? I literally, you've been napping in a sunbeam in the alternate dimension I sent you to. Unrelated. I feel like it's related. I mean, <laughs> I didn't harm you at all. I just undid. Like, He's I don't showing know you his butthole. He walks away. I mean, you honestly, butthole. you got it best of all the slime uses. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, or slime. Slusses. Hey, slime. Hey, slachum. Yep. Great butthole. Thank you. It's a great butthole. Hey, regular chum. Yeah. Right back at you. This is weird. Oh. All right. A very we all grumpy. Back out of here. <laughs> <laughs> not not the uh, not the characters, but us, like us, me the and podcasters. And yeah, these, exactly. Yeah. Wow, they dropped off the it's call just right really now, fast. Morgan. You just cut in like <laughs> <laughs> slowly fades out the audio. Yeah, the Oscars playoff music. <laughs> A very grumpy Purgatoni D looks you over and says. All right, you got your stuff. You got your new levels and everything. Now look, next layer, try to behave yourselves and you guys will end up with better stuff. Bish. And then, as though to illustrate his words, one of the rickety shelves of pretty lousy stuff topples backwards behind him. I got it, he says. Slime Achoom, you got a mop, buddy? And the Slime Achoom says, right away, baby, right away. Does he work here now? Are you guys dating? Yeah, What's he on? lives here now. What else do you do when you're oh, trapped with someone in he, forever? He lives there and works there and you're dating. That's awkward. That's just yeah. bad practices. I don't think that's bad practices. I think you that's You shouldn't hire totally your fiance normal. as a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That escalated Morgan, very wow. quickly. <laughs> what that? 
<laughs> Keeping that forever. <laughs> That's actually the opening credits to our show now. It's just a techno remix of You Should Not Hire Your Fiance. You Should Not Hire Your Fiance. <laughs> no, but seriously, about that. <laughs> I rushed Rondo, four. Huh? I feel like you. I feel like Eli yeah. rushed five, right? Like yeah, he rushed Michelle from Rondo, two sure. to five. Yeah, yeah. It was very close. They look very even in my Zencast. I don't <laughs> think they do. I don't, I, you're looking at the same thing I'm looking. You using Why are you gaslight us? We can see. It. I have no. You can't. I'm just gonna keep talking <laughs> until the Zencaster the pushes it out. It's too slow. It's too slow. This thing is <laughs> <laughs> it's not worth it. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2024. All rights reserved.